Um, so I wanted to uh, thank everyone, uh, all the organizers here for, for having me out. Um, I was really excited to get the opportunity to come and, and talk to all you guys about uh, you know, something going a little bit deeper um, than I would typically do in, in, in most uh, 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 talks at a conference. So I'm excited. Uh, you know, I prepared this talk specifically for, for this audience and, and um, you know, hopefully you know, uh, uh, you know, we'll help folks start thinking you know, a little more broadly about kind of where we're at uh, in the space and the ecosystem today. So, um, I titled the talk Layered Architecture for Distributed Applications, uh, but what I'm really going to talk about is, uh, if you go to my Twitter page, there's a pinned tweet on there that is essentially like a stack diagram of, you know, what I had at one point in time a few months ago, you know, put up as like my view on kind of the different layers of the container ecosystem. I call it the strata of the container ecosystem. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that diagram. In fact, I was asked uh, by Karthik and Paul and some others to, to come out and talk about that uh, uh, diagram. So um, it should be should be fun, uh, and let's get right into it. So first of all, a little bit about me. So I've been doing this for a while. I say 15 years. It's been more than that. Um, the gray hair is probably proof of that. Um, I started my career in, in ops and, and systems programming, um, doing the low level, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know kernel-ish development. Um, I was an early contributor to Docker, uh, added things like, have you ever used the dash V flag in Docker, sort of the storage system in Docker, the idea of host config, um, which was like non-portable container configuration was stuff we added um, you know, for Deus. And um, also early contributor to, to CoreOS, um, less in code and more in sort of usage. Um, and actually, you know, I think we were probably one of the first major projects to actually adopt CoreOS and, and deploy it um, at scale across you know, large numbers of, of companies. Um, I'm probably best known for the Deus project. Um, so just quickly on that, you know, if you're not familiar with Deus, uh, you know, Deus is at this point fair to say the, the leading Docker pass out there, which is to say it's a platform as a service that not only deploys Docker uh, containers or natively, um, but the platform itself is built as a series of Docker containers, um, which makes it incredibly easy to hack on. And you know, really, you know, the idea with it is it's a composable system. Um, you know, our, our sort of slogan is your pass, your rules, um, and and you know, our, our sort of you know container-based platform approach is, is a key part of that. Um, as with any pass, you know, pass is really about providing an opinionated workflow. Um, what I like to say about this is, you know, uh, 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 you, know, uh, you know, opinions. Everyone has one, right? And, and there's lots of different um, workflows um, that folks are trying to build and, and, and CD, CI/CD pipelines around Docker. We have one opinion, um, but you know, I encourage everyone to kind of find what fits with their workflow, um, and that may be days. Um, another thing is we're 100% open source, but Really, more than that, you know, our philosophy is really about incorporating the work of other projects and kind of sucking that work um, into Deus and trying to contribute back um, what we need. So, rather than, for example, building scheduling systems ourselves and, and you know, building you know stuff, uh, you know, a, a cluster consensus like you know NCD, we prefer to partner with with folks who are working on that stuff work incredibly closely with them and, and, and basically put all of our focus on the workflow and kind of you know, how you know, we tie all this together. Um, and because of that, we've been able to, I think, get you know, a, a working platform um, incredibly early. You know, we shipped the first release of Deus back in August of, of 2013, and um, today we have you know, lots and lots of uh, successful deployments. So project now, you know, we're over, uh, I think we're at almost 110 uh, external contributors now. Um, seeing crazy stats of 300 new clusters a day going up, um, 2,500 new nodes. But really, the point of this is that you know we deal with lots of real-world deploys, right? We have lots of customers that are you know calling us up and you know uh, you know running serious workloads um, on Docker and, and and through Deus, and so we've got some experience with you know not just Docker in production, but also building composable systems, and that's really what I want to be talking about today. So. Um, the diagram. Um, so uh, getting into this, um, I want to give you a little bit of a history about how this actually came out because it's kind of funny. So there was this Deus Hack Week that we did at Microsoft. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, Microsoft but uh, these days, but you know, they've been making lots of great strides in um, open source and, and kind of 
you know, the new Microsoft is, you know, we love Linux and, and you know, they, they did a big announcement with uh, Alex Polvey at, at CoreOS where Satya kind of put his arm around him and was like, you know, we, we love Linux and, and things like that. So um, as part of this effort, we were invited to come down to, to uh, uh, Microsoft's offices in San Francisco and spend a week certifying Deus on Azure, on their cloud. It was great. They brought like um, you know, 15 folks out there to help uh, work on it. We had every resource you could imagine, and, and they really threw everything into it. It was really fun. Um, at the end of it, we you know found some problems um, that uh, uh, specifically uh, in their um, networking uh, stack for Linux, and 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 you know we're still sort of sorting some of those out. But um, it was it was an incredibly valuable experience. But one of the things that happened while we were there is. Um, we went out, as, as one does, and, and talked about containers over some beer. Beer, um, beer ops, right. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, uh, I wish they were in vein cups, but they were, I think, regular mugs um, at the time. But it was, it was a really interesting conversation. And I remember at one point in, in the discussion, it went kind of something like this. So Microsoft, you know, in their kind of innocence, you know, that they don't really know the container space. But they're like, where does Deus sit relative to Docker, CoreOS? Mesos, um, Kubernetes, like literally everyone. And I was like, oh gosh, that's kind of a loaded question. And, and so, you know, I started to answer them by doing this little air diagram thing. And, well, it's kind of like this, you know, at the bottom you got, you know, your, your, your hardware layer, and then you typically have some kind of virtualization system on top of that. And you can have an operating system uh, that's gonna run on top of that. And typically you'll have some container engine, um, or today we have container engines that provide isolation uh, and, and, you know, that sort of thing. And you know, on top of that, you know, because containers are really processes, uh, you need some sort of scheduling system to actually drop containers across a distributed system with placement constraints and, and all that sort of, sort of goodness. And then in order to drive the scheduling system, you need something like an orchestration system, like you know, Kubernetes or, or, or you know, Docker Swarm or, or something like that. Um, and then above that sits Deus, um, which is kind of like a workflow thing that you know, really interacts with all this stuff. And it kind of you know provides a, a workflow for, for software teams, and they go, "Wow, that was super helpful. Um, you should probably write that down." And you know this is a few beers deep, so of course I go back to the hotel room and I can't sleep. I'm thinking about it. And I'm like you know trying to figure out what happens. So I don't sleep all night, and I wake up at you know six in the morning, and I just like crank out this diagram. I don't even really think about it, and I just post it up on Twitter. And this was this was the diagram. So. Layer one, you have physical infrastructure, basically your raw compute network and storage. Layer two, you have your, your, your virtual infrastructure, vSphere, EC2, that sort of thing. Operating systems, um, container engines, and, and you know, uh, this was actually the week, the hack week that I was out there was the week that Rocket came out. Um, and so I decided to include it in the slide there. Um, there's also other uh, uh, interesting isolation and, and container engines. OSV is an interesting uh, technology if you haven't taken a look at it yet. I'm more on the uni kernel side of the house. On, the, on scheduling, you have things like Mesos and, and, and Omega um, out there, and orchestration systems, Kubernetes, uh, Marathon, um, you know, Compose is, is a new one coming out from Docker. And then on the workflow there, you have Deus, and you also have OpenShift, which is uh, Red Hat's uh, uh, pass, which is really uh, also subscribing to this idea of, of layered architecture. So OpenShift is actually built atop Kubernetes, um, if you didn't know that. So, um, so this was the diagram I, I put out, and, and I, I didn't really think much of it, um, but immediately it started to get retweeted everywhere, kind of go, went around all these big organizations and got the Google guys weighing in and the Red Hat guys weighing in and, and, and lots of different things like that. And, um, you, you know, it, and, and really the, the point of this was not like that the diagram was right, you know, I was like half drunk when I wrote it, right? It was just that, you know, it was communicating something that you know, I think people were looking for, right? You know, people were looking for an idea of like, where does all this stuff fit in? How do you make sense of, of all the new technology that's out there? And so, you know, the diagram, you know, what I said about it is it sparked so many interesting conversations. Some of them were public, like, like on Twitter, um, but most of them were actually private. And, you know, I had people calling me and wanting to talk about, well, I'm building this sort of tool in this space, you know, where does it fit? You know, the LXC guys were like, you know, well, you know, aren't we, why aren't we in the diagram? That was actually a lot of it. It was like folks being like, well, where, not, where, where, uh, how come you didn't put me on, on this layer or whatever? And there's only so much room I have in the, in the diagram here. So, um, but and, you know, the other big thing here is, is you know, no, it's nowhere near this simple. Um, and actually, I cranked it out like, you know, it, it, after just quickly thinking about it. 
Um, but uh, it really did strike a chord with folks. And you know, it struck a chord with the folks at Docker. Um, it struck a chord with the folks at Google um, on the Google Container team and working on Kubernetes. Um, OpenStack folks, uh, you know, I had a lot, lot of discussions with um, Red Hat. Retweeted this everywhere. I think probably because I put OpenShift up at the top on on, on workflow um, layer. Uh, the, the VMware guys uh, uh, also uh, uh, very very interested in this. And then something interesting happened just last week. CoreOS came out with a version of this diagram. If you look, it looks. Uh, quite a lot like mine. No attribution, Melissa. Shame. No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. um, um, no but, but, but it, it's actually really nice to see other folks trying to grapple with this, right? Because, you know, I think as, a, you know, an industry, you know, it's time for, for us to start focusing on this stuff. Um, so, you know, why does this really resonate, right? Why, why does this idea of like a, a stack diagram and, and like a conceptual diagram um, in our space uh, uh, resonate so much? I really think there's two reasons why. The first is there's this proliferation of container technology that's being that's being uh, brought out today. And actually, this is a diagram um, from Krish uh, uh, at Red Hat that's like a mind map of the Docker ecosystem. And you can't really see it because there's just so much stuff going on in the space that it's just overwhelming to folks, right? So you have this, and, and this is, this on its own is, isn't really a bad thing, right? This is actually a good thing. This is about choice. This is about um, you know innovation. This is this is fantastic. The problem that we have is really this: is we have poor separation of concerns. Um, there is too much, you know, even in the space of open source, there's too much people duplicating work and projects that slightly overlap with each other. And it makes it really, really difficult to build composable systems. And I want to be clear that uh, you know I'm not I'm not talking about um, you know the idea that there shouldn't be competition in in, in in different areas. I think competition is really healthy. But I think as a whole, we as a community need to be pushing for where certain tools need to start and stop in, in terms of what the delineation of responsibilities are. And it's really up to us to sort of tell the tool makers and, and the folks who are building this stuff to ensure that we actually get the type of tools that we need. And I think um, really the idea here is that the ecosystem is starting to mature now where we need to start asking for this, right? It's you know the Wild West era of let's just build stuff to solve problems. We're, we're nearing the end of that. We need to start focusing our efforts a little bit better. So what we have today, because we don't have this, is, is really the status quo is, is something, you know, a pattern that you're going to see very often, which is vertically integrated systems with tight coupling across the layers, right? And, and you know, we're an offender of this. Um, lots of other folks are offenders of this. And the reason why you do this is because in order to make a system work and actually solve problems for, for uh, you know, a, a software company, you actually have to, to do the tight coupling. You have to make everything work cleanly across the layers. But that's not what composable systems are about. I should be able to swap out different components at different layers. I should really, in kind of the spirit um, uh, you know, of, of, these, of these architecture diagrams, only have to care about the layer below me, and not all of the other layers all the way down to the bottom. But as of right now, I have to care about all that stuff. Um, and, and for Deus, we, we certainly have to care all the way down um, to the operating system level. So um, we, need to, we need to figure out how we can push past this. So, this obviously leads into a discussion about the OSI model. I'm curious, how many of you in the audience here are familiar with, with, with OSI? Right, okay, of course. So, um, so the, you, know, uh, uh, you, you notice the diagram was seven layers. Honestly, that was an accident. It just happened to be seven layers. Was I happy that it was seven? Yes, I was happy that it was seven, but um, that wasn't the point of it. Um, so, it, it, you know, if you, if you look at the, the OSI model, you know, it's, it, you know, it really kind of looks like uh, you know what I was describing. You know, you're talking about separation of concerns uh, between layers, and on the surface, this looks like yeah, we should we should be doing something like this for the container ecosystem. Um, but if you dive in a little deeper, you actually find out that it's not so much of a fit, right? Because um, though you do have this idea of separation of concerns, the OSI model is really about um, data flow and specifically about encapsulation, which is to say that um, uh, each, as you go up each layer, you're actually encapsulating the layer below it. Um, and it's really about point-to-point -point communication between one application process and another application process and the data flow between those. So to say that we're looking for an OSI model for containers, that's not really, well, that's not really accurate, right? Um, so what we're really looking for is 
an answer to this question, right? How do we go from a Docker image to a deployed set of containers across a distributed system? And what are the different components of technology um, and where are the boundaries of those components that need to be built um, and we need to start standardizing on as kind of a community in order to achieve this? We basically need better separation of concerns. That said, there are still some things we can learn from the OSI model, right? It's not, it, you know, there's a reason we're, we're comparing it. But the most important thing that I took away after, you know, doing a bunch of research on the, on the topic is this principle is, is really the most important. A layer serves the layer above it and is served by the layer below it. That's really what we're talking about in terms of a conceptual uh, a diagram. So at this point, you know, I thought, you know, for this talk, well, it's, it's time to build a new diagram. Right, uh, you know, let's let, let's focus on one. Let's try and simplify this. Let's cut out, you know, kind of the unnecessary, irrelevant uh, parts of this, and let's focus this just on what we need and where, you know, I think, you know, we have actually a hope of getting some agreement, um, you know, in terms of uh, building composable systems. The diagram needs, uh, of course, to be simple and easily communicated. Um, it also needs to be reflective of real-world usage, which is to say, it needs to be, um, you know. Uh, correct uh, to some degree of correct. Um, and most importantly, it needs to help frame today's problems. Um, if the diagram doesn't frame today's problems, it's, it's probably not very, very useful. Um, and ideally, if, if we can, it can help provide some guidance um, for what are some of the things we might need to be doing uh, as a community going forward. So let's get into it. So. For the first layer, uh, you know, I, I really thought, you know, well, let, let's wipe out the physical infrastructure and the virtual infrastructure because we're really all we really care about in the space is execution, right? So, the execution layer to me is about providing an application binary interface, an ABI, used for isolation and execution of workloads across a cluster. Now, there's tons of ways that this can be done. It can be any operating system. These, the idea of these, of these sort of primitives uh, being available in execution layers is just central, it's core to what we do. On top of that, there's some type of coordination layer. And actually, um, you know, it's funny, I, you know, I, I joked about the core OS diagram. They actually pointed out kind of the need for this layer. This was not something that I actually had in my original diagram. Um, and you know, really here what we're talking about is providing some primitives for consistent and partition tolerant registration um, and discovery across the cluster. Now, um, you know, I, I'm going to talk some more about this uh, in a bit, but um, really I think the best reference piece on, on what this layer needs to be provided, um, if you're familiar with Jeff Lindsay uh, program, he has a great blog post on his blog about kind of the three uh, legs to um, uh, service discovery with, with Docker and with containers. I definitely recommend you check out this blog post because it's a, uh, a very important inspiration for, for what we need, I think, in this coordination layer. Moving up, um, we have an aggre aggregation layer here. And you know, really what, what I was doing here is you know, realizing that there's, there's you know, on the one hand, there's all these agents that are out there that are sort of collecting cluster resources. Like you know, here are nodes that have you know, CPU and, and memory and, 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 and things like that. And, and we want to aggregate those and we want to provide kind of a reservation or a scheduling interface um, to basically place workloads across uh, you know, a cluster that are you know, aware of you know, coordination and, and, and hit the execution layer ultimately. Now, that's, that's, you know, that's great. Um, but one of the other things I realized is that there's actually more going on in the aggregation layer than just compute, right? Really, we need to start talking about and thinking about how networking and storage are actually aggregated and included in kind of this discussion. To date, they're really not. Um, and we need to start thinking about how, how they can be. And above that, we have an orchestration layer. I mean, this is really where you provide a management interface for the distributed applications that you know, we're really uh, designed to run on this stuff and, and the resources that are associated with them. So this is sort of the diagram um, you know, that I came up with. And if you look at this you know, here on the execution layer, we have you know, things like Ubuntu um, you know, with, with you know, some sort of uh, a container isolation system, or like OS or um, Rancher OS. Uh, uh, for coordination, we have etcd, console, zookeeper um, are, are some examples of, of tools that kind of work at this layer. Um, for aggregation, you have uh, things like Mesos and Swarm, which are aggregating cluster resources, but also um, technologies like Weave and, and Flocker and, and Flannel and things like that that are aggregating storage and networking and presenting that um, ideally to an orchestration system. 
Um, you know, we don't quite have that today, but, uh, but I'm arguing that we should. And then at the top we have orchestration. Um, and, and really to me, this is about a declarative interface um, to, you know, to, tell, to tell the cluster, I want these workloads running um, and I want these resources attached to these workloads and ideally the ability to configure um, you, you know, uh, networking and storage and linking and things like that. So running through a few examples of some common stacks, you just kind of see, does this actually track with, with, with what's out there today? So if you take a look at kind of a, a Mesos specific stack, um, you can see, you know, for execution, if you're using the Mesos containerizer, um, you're actually using raw C groups um, at the end of the day, and that's you know, C groups on any OS, really. Um, for coordination, they actually use Zookeeper um, with Mesos, which is which is sort of consistent. Um, for aggregation, of course, Mesos um, with Mesos frameworks um, provides that, and 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 um, orchestration, you know, Marathon. So this is kind of a common stack in the the the, the, the Mesos world, and you know, fits pretty pretty well with 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 what we're describing here. Here's another example, uh, CoreOS kind of native stack. Um, you know, the CoreOS folks, so you know, if you're watching kind of where they're working, their heads are really in kind of the Kubernetes, um, you know, uh, camp at this point. And, um, you know, so at the bottom you've got an execution layer. I don't quite think it's Rocket today, um, but I think they're gonna, you know, today I think it's probably still Docker, but um, I put Rocket up here, uh, forward thinking for them. Um, etcd is, is what they're using for coordination. and. You know, for aggregation, you know, I want to point out that you know, it's not just one component here that, 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 that operates at these layers. Ideally, for composable systems, we're talking about multiple components that are providing kind of uh, you know, functionality to these layers. So for example, um, at the aggregation layer, you have the kublets that are actually aggregating your um, you know, cluster resources for you know, the compute side of the equation, CPU, memory, um, that sort of thing. Um, you also have Flannel, which is aggregating the network uh, interfaces and providing that as a soft, software-defined networking, um, you know, and, and configuring that uh, uh, cluster-wide. And then at the top, you have really the Kubernetes pod manifest. It's kind of the declarative manifest that you use to, to run stuff. So that's another example. Another example is Docker. Um, and, and this one's kind of interesting because it's really still in flux. Um, the Docker native stack is, of course, at the bottom, a Docker uh, 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 execution agent. Um, as I was discussing uh, with Victor recently, there is no coordination right now. There is no coordination system with Swarm. Um, they don't have one. Um, there's talk about uh, uh, using something uh, along the lines of console, but it's still pretty early there. Um, for aggregation, they're, they're uh, looking at Swarm. I know they're working on some stuff in the networking space also. Um, and Compose is the idea that you, know, you would be using Compose to write your declarative manifest, and that would you know, hit Swarm, and that would ideally be coordinated by some, some cluster coordination system, and, ultimately run uh, containers across uh, you know, uh, using Docker. So how about Deus, right? How about something that is kind of sitting outside or on top of this? And, and really, you know, when you think about this, this isn't just Deus. This is really anything that is trying to interact with, yeah, as a higher order um, you know, system than the orchestration layer. So another example is Jenkins, right? You know, if you're using Jenkins to drive um, a CI CD pipeline or, or Go um, you know, CD or, or something like that, um, this is, I think, relevant. So if you look at Deus, really the core thing that we're doing in Deus is we're modeling the idea of a build plus configuration equals a release. And we model those releases as container images that have all of the, you know, sort of uh, runtime configuration uh, bundled in. Um, and then what we do is, you know, we have some deploy logic that talks to some orchestration system um, and does everything that I talked about. So it's basically driving the bus for uh, this, this, this architectural diagram that, 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 I'm, that I'm showing here. So today, the way that Deus works is we have fleet units that we use um, to do kind of the orchestration component um, of this. Um, these are not declarative, uh, they're kind of a mess, um, and we're looking for something better right now. Uh, but we use Fleet for aggregation of cluster resources, and Fleet really allows us to aggregate um, you know, uh, 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 you know, com compute resources only. We don't do any aggregation of networking, we don't do any aggregation of storage, and therefore, we are restricted to 12-factor apps because we can only kind of manage on the cluster the compute side of the equation. And when you're limited to that, you know, there's nothing you can do about storage. So um, you know, we're, 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 we're working on that uh, problem now with, with some other folks in the space. Coordination, we use etcd, and, and for execution, we're using Docker on CoreOS. And you know, I think this is actually a pretty common stack for, for folks who, who are in kind of the CoreOS space. You know, a lot of folks are, are having good success with Fleet today. Now, um, days tomorrow, um, you know, I, I think you know, we're, we're still kind of debating this, but where it looks like we're going to go um, 
in the near future is using Compose as the declarative interface that we're going to model inside of Deus to, to, to track each application. We're going to have that translated to a Compose um, manifest because, frankly, I don't know of any other manifests that are out there um, that actually have any, any, any uh, weight behind them. Um, I'd love to see more choice here. Um, I was recently at a, 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 a VMware um, you know, uh, summit um, on uh, it's kind of an application blueprint uh, working group where some other folks in the space, including some folks here, um, like uh, Duncan, I, I know we're, we're at that, this meeting, trying to figure out how do we come up with a manifest that everyone can kind of get behind that's going to work with all the different um, you know, cluster management systems that are out there. And I think it's you know, an uphill battle to get that many people to agree, but you know, I, I applaud the effort. Um, but right now, Compose is kind of where it's at. For aggregation, um, Swarm seems, uh, for now, uh, the, the most sort of uh, uh, easiest for us to kind of hack, hack with um, and the most composable. Uh, coordination is still etcd, and, and for execution, still Docker on CoreOS. But really the important thing here is, in the future, what I want and, and what I think everyone should want is if you're building a higher order system, you should have to integrate with some type of application, declarative application manifest, and that's it. Submit that thing to some uh, orchestration system and you should not have to care what's happening on the aggregation layer, you should not have to care what's happening for coordination, and you should certainly not have to care about what the execution uh, runtime is. Um, that should all be managed for you um, at the top. This is the future that, that, that I want to see. <laughs> so let's specifically get into some things. So uh, you know we're, we're we're at a container conference. Um, you know I want to you know give some real technical specifics about some of the things that I want to see um, out of the space. So on the execution layer, I want to see fewer host dependencies and performance variability. Right now, running a Docker container on you know uh, some older Linux system versus running it on a CoreOS kernel with you know a, a three eighteen or three nineteen kernel on it. Widely varying performance characteristics, the, the underlying uh, union file systems and graph driver implementations in Docker function completely differently, and you don't actually have this idea of portability. You, know, people, you can move the container, but it's going to run differently on every host. We need to fix that, right? I want more choice in container image formats. Um, you know, the Docker image format has kind of, uh, you know, uh, burst onto the scene. Everyone's um, into that. I think the ACI spec is a great thing. I think it, you know, um, I'd like to see more specs and more um, choice uh, in those formats. Because, frankly, there's a lot of stuff that's missing from the Docker uh, format. But, you know, I'll give one example. Um, the Docker image format, you expose ports, but you don't actually expose uh, what the protocols are that those ports are, are listening to. If you're building higher order systems on top of that, that information is pretty critical. Port 9000, you know, if it's, uh, you know, UDP, you know, I, I, you know, ha, ha, you know that, I need to know that <laughs> information. We don't have that right now. I also want better security and isolation. Uh, you know, it's crazy to me that we still don't have user namespaces support. Crazy that uh, a root inside the container is still equal to root outside the host. I know there's some challenges around sort of file system mapping and stuff like that, but we have the technology, user namespaces, and they actually exist. We can, we can implement this stuff. Um, syscall filtering. I was talking uh, uh, last night with some folks. I really, really want to see not just capability filtering, but syscall filtering. And I also, really importantly, I want simpler integration with registration and discovery services. You know, uh, the folks at Glider Labs are doing terrific work on making it easy to, you know, just run containers and have them integrate with registration and discovery services. Um, we need more of that. We need we need it to be easier uh, for folks to not have to roll their own, um, you know, one-off uh, registration and discovery. Um, every time. So, with regards to coordination, you know, this is actually, actually I think a really interesting uh, uh, layer of the stack. Um, the first thing I want is I, I want better cluster bootstrapping experiences. So, you know, one of the reasons that we struggled with console in the beginning was they didn't actually have a way. You had to like manually join nodes to a console cluster. Like, you know, uh, and with, with etcd, you actually have this thing called a discovery URL, which is like a rendezvous service where all the nodes kind of find each other and can perform initial leader election and figure out the, the you know, basic cluster topology. We need, we, need, we, we need to ask for more on this. You know, I, I think this experience can still be improved. Another thing, and, and you know, this may be getting into some controversial territory, but I really want a coordination layer that serves as a single source of truth for both host and service topology. 
I think it's crazy that we have all these different clustering agents in kind of the aggregation layer that are each doing their own health checking of the nodes. And you know, if there's a cluster partition, you know, the meso stuff is gonna find out about it at one point and the weave stuff is gonna find out about it at another point and the flocker stuff's gonna find out about it later. That sucks, right? I want one single source of truth for, yes, getting a thumbs up from, from Luke, that's, that's a good sign. Now, you, you know, there's two parts to this. Obviously, you know, this needs to be built into the coordination systems, you know. Um, you know we don't have this today. Like, etcd is, is kind of a primitive, and you know, they follow the Zookeeper model of doing few things, so there probably needs to be some additions to something like um, etcd in order to accomplish this, but there needs to be one map of what the cluster currently looks like. Um, and it also needs to include a uniform interface for health checking and heartbeats. You know, I think console, you know, again, uh, to their credit, they really got this right. You know, heart beating and health checking are, are just critical um, to providing a uniform uh, view of, of what the cluster topology is. And if you get this stuff, if you can actually provide this in here, we, you should be able to provide another feature that I'd really like, which is support for logical cluster partitioning. So if I'm running a cluster today and I want to tomorrow divide it up between here's my, my staging and here's my production, I should be able to go to the cluster coordination layer and just draw that line. And everything else above it should respect it, right? And you know, another example use case for that is what if I have a host that's been compromised? I want to revoke you, you know, the host, but maybe to not shut it down because I want to do some forensics on it. Right now what I have to do is I have to go into that host and I have to kill every agent that's running on it. I gotta kill the Mesos agents, I gotta kill the Weave agents, kill the Swarm agents, all the different things that are running on it. And there's no uniform way for me to say, knock this host out of the cluster. We need that, we should be asking for that. It's, it, it's, it's time. Moving up the stack, aggregation. Um, you know, this is a big one. Uh, you know, I want concurrent scheduling across shared cluster resources. So, you know, I, I, I you know, was talking about this recently. You know, right now, today, Mesos is actually the only cluster scheduling uh, and aggregation framework out there that actually allows you to work off of one pool of resources and then uses this idea of a two-level scheduler to offer resources to different sets of scheduling logic. So, you know, for example, you could run 10 Docker swarms and they would all be using the same working off the same cluster topology. That's really important, right? Right now, most of the schedulers that we use, they each keep their own map of what the cluster topology looks like. That's not okay. We, again, we need to be um, you know, providing for concurrent scheduling systems. I want deference to the coordination layer um, for cluster topology. If, if, if you know, the, the swarm or the Mesos or, 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 or the, the, the flocker agents don't respect the cluster topology, that's gonna be bad for us. And critically, I want people to be thinking about networking and storage in this aggregation layer. They are in critical to the future of, of our ecosystem. And today, we only really think about compute. Um, that has to change. And I also want more choice in, in this space. I think that it's crazy to me that Mesos is the only um, solution out there um, that can actually share and pool cl cluster resources across the data center. We, we, you know, that, that, that can't last um, you know, for much longer. On the orchestration layer, you know, again, declarative interfaces. Fortunately, I think everyone in the industry is kind of, uh, uh, you know, agrees that declarative is, is the interface that we need here. You know, Compose and the Kubernetes pod manifest are good examples of that. Um, but I also want support for things like application networking, right? I want to be able to, in my Compose or, or, or Kubernetes pod manifest, define what a network looks like, and I want it to be able to be isolated, and I want to say that it's explicitly linked to some other networks. And I want to be able to do the software-defined networking inside of, of the manifest, right? Why can't I do that? I mean, we, again, we have the technology. Let's, let, let, let's make that work. And critically, I want an interface for defining portable cluster-aware storage. And I want it defined at the orchestration layer. So I want to say, I want to run these containers, and I want the storage to look like this. I want, you know, 10 gigs of storage with, you know, striped with, you know, this policy and, um, you know, all the different bits of tunables that I might want for a storage configuration. I want that in the manifest in a way that's portable and, and, and can be run anywhere. Um, and, you know, again, you know, when we can get to this, you know, the, you know now we're start, starting to talk about, you know, uh, you, you know, stateful containers that can really be run anywhere and, and, and you know, running databases and production data stores inside containers, which is something I desperately, desperately want to do. 
And, and critically, I, I want looser coupling um, between aggregation and scheduling systems. So right now, it's like, you know, you got, uh, you know, Compose and Swarm are, are just so tightly coupled. Um, you know, the Kubernetes pod manifests and, and, and the kublets and, and that sort of thing, they're, they're really tightly coupled. I want to be able to run some declarative pod manifest and I want every aggregation system to support that. If I want to use Compose or if I want to use, you know, what, what's coming out of the VMware application uh, uh, blueprint, um, you, you know, system, I want that to be supported by everyone, ideally. Um, and if we can't come up with a single standard, which you know could be could be possible, at least let's let's work on you know getting a couple of standards out there that we can all um, agree work. So um, you know, critically, you know, those are some of the things that, that I want. But you know, really, this is not about what I want. This is about what you want and what you know we as a community really want. So um, I, I, you know, and and you know, really, when you're thinking about this, you know, you may not want some of the technical uh, uh, details that I want, but you may want something more simple, like. I want the ability to, you know, easily, you know, integrate a CI/CD pipeline, you know, or I want, you know, you know, some stuff that's more about your day-to-day -day, um, workflow. Those things are just as important. What you want is just as important as what the folks who are building or integrating um, the tools want. Um, but I think we're now, you know, this ecosystem is now mature enough that we need to start asserting ourselves, and we need to get, you know, uh, in, in front of this, and we need to say, hey tool builders, folks uh, building you know, integrated uh, uh, systems. Composability is important. The stuff matters. Um, and, and we need to take a stand on that um, as a community. And, and um, you know, I hope uh, uh, we can uh, translate that into uh, some of the sessions that we have today. So that's it. Thank you.